Hi, this is more of an in-depth review of the Turnigy 9X I bought from Hobby King. This is version 2. Um, just going to go through a list of the good and the bad for this radio. So far I have it in five models and it's been pretty rock solid. I can't say that I've had any glitches or lockouts. I got it in a glider and I've had that glider nearly out of sight where I could hardly tell. In fact, I just couldn't tell which way it was going. I had to bring it down, but um, range is great. I've also done a, a ground test where I've walked and walked and walked. 3,000 feet we just gave up. So um, right off the bat, um, some of the good things I can tell you. Um, on the Spectrum, I had a Spectrum DX6i. And it's a great radio. Can't say anything wrong about that radio or bad. Uh, but I didn't like the fact that you could get dust between the screen and the glass. And that happened all the time. I kind of, you know, a little finicky about that. I looked through and there's all this crud in there. And I opened it up and it's just a clean shot. There's no gasket. This has a gasket, which is really cool. I mean, they really thought of that. Um, the construction inside is, I think it's up to par with, uh, say, a Spectrum. You know, that's... Um, I haven't been inside the new Futabas, but I'm sure they're like, you know, rocket, uh, like uh, space shuttle stuff inside. But this is, this is good. It's adequate. It looks good. Um, comes with a, uh, and I'll just pull it apart and show you guys. Um, it's one of these battery holder things. Um, I talked to one of the other users about this, and he said he had a model crash. And... The thing is, um, he said it might might have been this, that if you if you place this in the wrong way, in other words, if it's flopped on end, um, it distorts the battery tray. It's hard to get the lid on. Um, with it, with the batteries facing out like this, the lid goes on easy and um, doesn't seem to be a problem. But it is possible that um, if this is flopped, it distorts the the tray, and then you have a um, intermittent battery power, which sucks. He said his, his radio went blank on him and he crashed the model. So he's investigating that. The jury's kind of out on that. I mean, it could be it's just a crap radio, um, but so far, um, so good. I, I got this tip from someone online somewhere. you got to fit it in this way or it doesn't work. And I was just lucky enough to just come across that post. So that that's good. So far, I found also that the receivers can take abuse. I've got a receiver in a what they call a light light flight bug and just through just fun fly and pilot error I've crashed it a billion times um, at least a hundred times and just no problems keeps hitting the ground gets pounded it has no case on it took the case off to lighten it up um, I think the whole receiver the receivers weigh about 18 grams it's like nine grams without the case so if that helps anyone out there. And it's eight channel. That's all you get. It's not a nine channel. That's I don't know where they get nine from. That's ridiculous. Okay, so the, the trainer. The training switch is backwards. And what I mean by that is the actual switch to give the student the the model control. Um in a, in a standard training setup, you just the instructor pulls and holds this momentary switch towards him. That's how all the radios work, as you know. In this system, you've actually you've actually it's the opposite. The way it is now, the student has the control. When you want to take control, you've got to reach up, reach up. The instructor's got to reach up. So this guy you're training has got this friggin' airplane full throttle. You know, upside down. He's just pulled. He's upside down. He's screaming 100 miles an hour straight to the ground. No, better get. He's screaming straight to the guy in the cage next to you. <laughs> and uh, you got to reach up and go click and take control. That's sucky. So what I did was I devised a little thing to invert the switch. I made a little spring thing. And what it is, the spring with a couple of pieces of vinyl tube. And it goes over the top. It goes on the switch here. 
it pulls the switch. Now it's normally pulled. So I just hold it with my finger. Student makes a mistake. I let go. I'm controlling. I don't have to have my, my finger up here, you know, holding it to control. I just let go. Boom. So that's that's one way you can get around it. That's that's what they call a workaround. And it's dumb that we have to do these kinds of things. But it is a $55 radio. So what are you going to do? Um, I was flying the other day, and I found that my... Um, trim switch for the aileron stuck and I heard it go beep 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 and I realized it no big deal it unstuck don't know what that's about um, it seems to work every time but occasionally it gets stuck so you know yeah there you go what are you gonna do it's a TP radio but uh, no big deal isn't broken it's just sticky for some reason okay you've just unpacked your Turnergy and you go to switch it on and uh oh, what's this? It's a switch error. It's beeping at you. Switch error. I mean, what the hell could that mean? Well, it's as simple as one of these switches is in the wrong position. The switches all have to be up and back for you to be able to get it to, to come on. And then after that, you can work the switches any way you want. Everything is fine after that. Some quick notes about programming uh, you need a long press to get into the menus. We're in the menu. Uh, to go to the settings menu, left, right won't do it. You have to go up. That puts you over in settings. Then you've got, uh, say, the reverse menu. This is where short press on menu. And then, you, as you can see, you can change the uh, direction. Like for throttle, that's a common one. And then plus or minus, that reverses it. And then you hit menu to get out. Short press on menu gets out. Okay, now here's some tips about uh, like setting up elevons. So we're at elevon. Uh, you want to activate instead of inhibit. Go down a field. You'll notice that um, now you're setting up on the elevon. Uh, the you usually have two servos that work um, both uh, elevator and aileron. And what you're doing is you're putting in the amount of throw uh, one way or the other. So here we are at zero. We're going to run it up to 100. So it's 100%. So how do you set up the other side of the throw? Well, you have to come up and touch the stick. And that will put you over into the other area to enter the value. And then you simply enter the value. And it's positive and negative values. So if you find that the... Uh, uh, servo is uh, just uh, swinging to the right. You know, maybe you need a negative value. Boom. There's negative 100. Not sure if I would trust anything, you know, $55 radio and something that's fast and heavy and that can kill people. Um, the visions I have are of that old classic movie, Frankenstein, where you've got these people with... Uh, torches and clubs and things and they're all chasing after you because you were the guy that bought the $55 radio and stuck it in the nine pound model and it got out of control and killed someone so I think I'd probably stick with uh, you know a well-known name a brand radio if I were going to put it in something fast or dangerous all the stuff I have you probably maybe raise a, uh, a lump on someone's head, maybe at the very most. I think the heaviest model I, I have is less than 30 ounces. So, anyway. But it's, you know, your mileage may vary as much as you want to take a chance. I have AMA. Who knows? Would they cover it? I don't know.